up here as long as that's blinking. contest for this year and this year's winner is Connie Carp. She's the daughter of W.H. and Vera Carp right here in Tuna and the name of her essay was titled Human Rights. Why bother? Second place <laughs> went to Jimbo Beaumont for uh, Living with Radiation and uh, third place went to Levita Posey for her essay titled The uh, Other Side of Bigotry. I tell you Arliss, with a subject like that I don't know how they ever picked a win. Well I don't either. I'll tell you it should make the citizens of Tuna proud to know we're still producing well-educated students who know what America is all about. And they do. They do, they, they do. do. Well, we always thought they did a damn fine job. Oh, thank you, Ron. This just didn't. Excuse me, Thurston. Well, go right ahead. Uh, I have bad news for the greater Tuna area. Former county judge Roscoe Buckner died at his home yesterday. He has suffered a severe stroke. Buckner, who was judge in the greater Tuna area for 47 years, and who homeboy people in the 30s and any other active judge, had a history of heart trouble. Now, the Bible line state that Huber Funeral Home started today at 12 noon. And Wexler Huber says, if you're going to come before noon, you're going to have to wait. Because the judge will be ready till noon. I'll tell you, folks, that's some bad news. It is. It is. It is. Uh, and on the art scene, the on-again, off-again auditions for the Tuna Little Theater production of My Fair Lady are on again. Now, the production had been called off due to a lack of budget, but Joe Bob Lipsy, who is the director of the show this year, said he found a way to go ahead with the production by using sets and costumes from last year's show of South Pacific. And Joe Bob says it's going to be the first ever production of My Fair Lady set in Polynesia. Well, something like that might just put us on the map. All the way along with it. They'll find us. So Joe Bob says get out your Hawaiian shirts and your grass skirts and your coconuts and come on out to the Coweta Baptist Church at 8.30 Thursday night to audition for My Fair Lady. And Joe Bob says he wants to integrate the cast this year. So if you know any Negro or Mexican-American actors or actresses, have them come on out and Try out for the court. That's right. Come on out. Come on, Come out. on out. You just might uh, get a part. You might. You might. Oh. Well, Thurston, you got that uh, farm report? Oh, uh, yeah. I got that uh, uh, farm report. Oh, uh, I got that farm report. Everything's uh, not in just yet. But I got uh, pork up, beef down, chicken vacillating. I don't know much about the sow bellies. But I do know it's time for a word from our sponsor, Dee Dee Snape of Dee Dee Used Weapons. And uh, here's Dee Dee to tell us all about them used weapons. Here you go, Dee. Does the high cost of security have you blue? If so, come by our store and browse through our complete selection of used guns and knives. Or find what you need in our Mason tear gas department. Now we understand that many people are hesitant to buy used weapons, but all of Dee Dee's weapons are guaranteed to kill. If you find a weapon here that won't kill, just bring it back, and we'll get you something that will. It's our guarantee. If Dee Dee's can't kill it, it's a mortal. Thank you, Dee Dee. Thank you, Dee Dee. It's always nice to have Dee Dee here with us. Thank you, Dee Dee. And uh, now for that weather report, we're going to go out to the field with uh, Harold Lee Latimer, our weatherman, to see what the weather's going to be like for uh, this afternoon. And so, uh, Harold Lee, uh, what's it going to be? Well, it's going to be a little bit of everything. We got some rain coming in from the east, and the west, and the north, and the south. <laughs> but by mid-morning, it will clear it off. And by noon, it should be unbearably hot and humid. We're expecting about 100 and 101. We also got these uh, pots of dust storms coming in from out west Texas. They could be severe. They say the sky could go completely black around 4 o'clock this afternoon. And we also got this swarm of locusts heading to Louisiana, but I'm thinking the dust's going to kill a lot of them. And the rest will probably get thrown away and dried in the tropical storm we got coming. And that'll be Tropical Storm News. And Tropical Storm News is going to bring a lot of rain with it. It's going to be wet and cloudy and visible. And it's going to rain. So get out those raincoats. Back to you, Thurston. Well, you heard it, folks. Rain. You know, uh, here's the 
Bill Dean has to get up every morning around 4.30, give these fine, fine weather reports. And, you know, sometimes we'll be driving on into the station and we'll, we'll see him out there in the field and hell, God only knows what kind of way. Hell, I'll see him up to his neck in snow before. Remember that time that big old spout picked him up and flew him over to Miller's Pond? I picked him up and dropped him in Dewey County. <laughs> and it's still got that weather part in on time. He did. He did. He did. He did. Oh, what's this? A UFO, that is an unidentified flying object, has been spotted by R.R. Snavely over Lake Mobile. Now, R.R. says it looks like a gigantic hovering chalupa without the guacamole. <laughs> well, well, that's what it says. It does. It does, it does. And from our world news desk, peace talks fail, attack is imminent. Well, that's all the news we got for you, but stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Stay tuned. So we got later on the oh, line oh, coming. Oh, up. thank you, Ronnie. Uh, got a note here. You forgot to throw the power switch on. You're not on the air. Good morning, Tuna. This is Thurston Wheels. Hey, this is Arla Struby. And this is the Wheelist Struby. <laughs> This is uh, Emma Watkins on station OKKK, representing Clan 249. Now, just want to remind everybody we're going to have a meeting tonight down at the meeting hall. Going to talk about them sharecroppers down by Hogshooters Creek. Now, they've been taking them more than their share of land down there. They ain't leaving nothing for the wild game to live in. And come this fall, there ain't going to be nothing to kill. And, well, that spot's going to be gone. So we just want everybody to show up tonight at the meeting, so uh, we're going to plan what we're going to say. And I think they're going to listen. This is Emma Watkins on station OKKK for Clan 249. Thank you. Well, uh, City Fest, speaking to you for the Greater Tuna Humane Society. And I would like to take a minute to ask each of you to think about ducks. It's tough being a duck. Cartoons portray ducks as genetic mutants with speech impediments. The very word duck, when used as a verb, means to rapidly lower body position to avoid injury. So when you say duck to somebody, they don't know whether you're talking about a verb or an accident. And the Chinese eat their feet. Now you may not know it, but we are in the middle of a severe duck crisis situation right here in Tunis. Ever since the government flooded Buckner Basin, the wild ducks have got no nesting grounds left. We are up to our necks in homeless ducks. To remedy the situation, the Humane Society has published a pamphlet, Duck Trapping Without Trauma. And we are sending copies to every home in the Greater Tuna area. Now you send the trapped ducks to me, Petey Fitz, and I will personally relocate them in unflooded areas. This has been Petey Fitz speaking to you for the Greater Tuna Humane Society. Thanks. Drifting along with a tumbling tumbleweed Sends him home for me to take care of. But no, you cannot have another dog, little boy. 
Eight little dogs is just too many. You could not have another dog, little Jody. I'll take care of it, Mom. Well, honey, it's not a matter of taking care of it. It's just not normal being you know, eight to ten dogs following you around all the time. Now, and don't let that dog in the house. That reporter from Houston is going to be here any minute. Don't let that. Oh, now, isn't that the cutest little thing? Oh, stop getting that cutest. Stop it now, oh. You have done it to me. Yes, you have done it to me. Oh, well, get out there with the rest of you, know. Hey, hey, you boys let her alone. Now, you stop that now. Bless her heart, isn't she cute? I can kill that guy that Stand there, honey. Um, do you want some oatmeal? Uh-uh. Well, how about some hash browns? Uh-uh. Well, I can use some biscuits and gravy. Oh, Mom, get off now. I'm going to get some M&M's on the way to trade school. Now, stand there. <laughs> Man cannot live by M&M's alone. Oh, Mom, get off. And don't you lie to me about trade schoolie. Vera Cobb says you spent half the morning yesterday sitting in your car in front of the grocery store. Yeah? Well, Vera Cart can kiss my rusty butt. Stand it, don't you starve. <laughs> Mom, I would be just fine if Charlene would stop it. Oh, I wish the guy and your sister would stop that fighting. Yeah, I hear up there groaning. Stand it, she'll hear you. Locks the door, turns on the water, starts groaning. Stanley. Every time that groaning starts, I know she's trying to squeeze into another pair of my blue jeans. Now, Stanley, you mean to be yourself someday. Yeah, well, if I am, Shoot me. Stanley! Mama, she ripped out three pair of my Wranglers in the last month. <laughs> Charlene, now get out of Stanley's shoes now. Now we're gonna find her a good diet. You better find her a good surgeon. <gasps> Stanley! <laughs> Mama! <laughs> get out of here. Get out of here before you drive me into a rubber room with big springs. Charlene, honey, Charlene, I know you're too big to fit into Stanley's jeans. Now why don't you get out of them? Oh, it just breaks my heart to turn that baby's feelings. Yeah, well I should have known you take her side. Oh, get out of here, Stanley, and don't let those dogs in the house. I'll just clean this out. I gotta get the set up on it. Hey, baby, get off that table. Bingo, you're stopping it. Get off that table. Bingo. Oh my God, what is that? No, 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 get out of here. No, take it with you, Bingo. Oh my God, no, you're a devil, baby. Now, Charlie, now, honey, I know you're working on your poem for your radio show, but your breakfast is getting cold. Which one? Wolfie. Wolfie, now come on down here now. Wolfie, you get out of Charlotte's room now. Wolfie, next time you come to this house, there's going to be a German shepherd who's going to be looking for a new home. And you're next. I had it. Charlene now, honey. You want some more? No, Mom. How about some biscuits and gravy? Oh, no, thank you, Mother. Well, I could uh, fry you some bacon. Oh, I don't think so. Well, here, at least have a cup of coffee. <laughs> Charlene, Charlene, we said we use sweet and slender in our coffee. Oh, mother, I use sweet and slender when I still had something to live for. Oh, honey, what's wrong? Nothing. Why are you mad? I'm mad. Now, honey, everybody can't be a cheerleader. Oh, mother. There are other things to live for. Name what? Can't think of any right now, but if I do, I'll, I'll, I'll write them down on a little note and give them to you. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If that vicious little Connie Cock calls me two minutes one more time, she better send out for bandages. Oh, she's like a mother. You have to kill her with kindness. Well, I'm going to kill her with something. Charlene, now do one to other. Uh -huh. And don't let those damn dogs out. I'll just clean this out. Anything to drink, Mrs. Bue Miller? Could we get right to the interview? Of course. Now, uh, you are chairing the committee on the censorship of textbooks, am I oh, correct? No, 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 that's no reference. Spikes, who heads that committee, although I am a member. 
We're having a meeting this afternoon, but, but please don't come. Reverend Spike just hates the press. I, I suppose it's because of all those old That's folks' home zealings and all the terrible things the press has been saying about him. I probably shut up. Anyway, I have a subcommittee that wants to snatch the books off the shelves of that local high school library. Now, some of those books are absolutely disgusting. It just makes me hurt, and I just want to, you know, protect our children. Somebody's got to protect our children. Uh, before we get to the actual books, Mrs. Bue Miller, could you tell me what in your background you feel qualifies you to censor library books? Well, I could uh, briefly miss my activities if you like. Uh, please. Well, I am president for Ladies for Better Tuna. I am den mother for den 225. I am the only high C soprano in the First Baptist Choir. I am uh, the recorder of the Javelina Club. That's sort of a <laughs> women's auxiliary of the wild hogs. <laughs> sort, of sort of an off-break of the Lions Club. We just thought the Lions were too liberal. <laughs> anyway, um, I do hear... I am a member of uh, the uh, shut-in visiting squad, that's the Tuna Helpers, and I'm the formal head of the BBB, that's the Better Baptist Bureau, and I am uh, currently president and co-founder for Citizens for Fewer Blacks in Literature. Uh, well, thank you, Mrs. Bue Miller. I think I get the idea. Well, all right. Now, Mrs. Bue Miller, exactly what are the books that you feel should be removed from the shelves? Wait, now there's four we'll begin with, I think, and and we're going to get them removed nationwide, and we'll, we'll work from there. Uh, what are the books, Mrs. Bue Miller? Roots! Now, we don't deny that Roots has been a very popular TV series, but we feel it only shows some um, one side of the slavery issue. Go on. Bury my heart and wounded knee. Now, it's the most disgusting title to begin with. It just makes me want to irk. And it vilifies a great American general, General George Custer, and encourage the reader to believe that America is not capable of making any treaties. Anymore? Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Oh, did, did he write that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it shows a, a free teenage boy a, a running away from home, a, a boy in the shores, a cohorting with the Negro convicts, and uh, putting on women's clothes. <laughs> What's next? Uh, Romeo and Juliet. Oh, now what pray tell is wrong with Romeo and Juliet? Well, it shows sex among teenagers, that's all. And we're not for encouraging sex, and we're certainly not going to promote it. Mrs. Bue Miller, quite often these days, people claim to talk to God. Do you talk to God when, when I pray? No, I didn't ask you that, Mrs. Bue Miller. I asked you if you talk to God directly. Well, well, no, I don't, but he leaves little messages for me with, with the Reverend Sparks and, and second-hand messages from the law are good enough for me. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Bue Miller. I think we've got one hell of a story. Now, now don't you rush now. I've got other really interesting things to tell you about, too. Well, I'm sure it just boggles the mind, but I really must Wait, run. now, Mr. Ha-ha-ha. Uh, 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 now, what was the name of your or magazine? Uh, <coughs> Intellect. Intellect. I don't believe we have that here, too. <laughs> well, I'll see that you get a copy. Well, well, Good day, Mrs. Buehler. Mr. <laughs> that reporter just asked the strangest of questions. Well, I guess I'm lucky he didn't ask more than he did. I guess I'm lucky he didn't ask me about my, my family. Oh, poor Charlene. I swear that girl's all torn up about not getting chilly. I just look and I say, Charlene, now, honey, sit down now, baby, it'll be fine. You'll get shitty the next year. But she just looks at me with tears streaming down the cheeks and says, but mama, I'm a senior. <laughs> I swear I don't know how to tell my only daughter she's never going to make chili. I swear to God I don't know how I'm going to do it. Oh, and Stanley, nothing's been right with that boy ever dating after Mexican girl. Oh, he's never been right. Oh, but Jody, Jody's going to be okay, except that he's got eight to ten dogs following around him all the time, but, but he'll grow up bad. I, I know he will. I hope. Well, at least I didn't have to lie about old Hank. I swear I cooked and cleaned for that sorry son of a bitch for 27 years. He can't even take me to the driving movies. Of course. 
I pretend not to notice this. We go to church on Sunday morning after Saturday night. I pretend not to notice all the lipstick smears and, and the perfume. You know, sometimes I just wish that man would have a stroke. I swear I do just, just have a stroke. Oh, I, I'm sorry, God. God, forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm just glad that reporter didn't ask. This is all the truth with the news update concerning the recently deceased Judge Roscoe Buckman, who died yesterday. Now, the body was found by Nikki Mayberry, who come over to collect for the newspaper. And Nikki wishes to quell our rumors that the judge was found dead in a woman's bikini swimsuit. He said there's no truth to that rumor whatsoever. It's not true. It's not. It's not. It's not. It's not. According to Nikki, it was a 1950 turquoise Dale Evans one piece swimming suit with lots of cowgirl friends. <laughs> so it was all pending that he would be my home. Ain't that awful? That, that's just awful. God! Pity first, speaking to you for the great and truly humane society. I am here to introduce this week's head of the week. His name is Yippee Yah Yah Yay. But we just call him Yippee. That's why. This is Yippee's fifth appearance as head of the week. And this charming little part chihuahua, part rat terrier will make a lovely pet for someone. What's your stop? His only drawback is a slight tendency to hyperactive behavior. Stop it! As you can understand, we as the Humane Society often have trouble giving away small, thrill animals. But we still have hope for Yippee. We know there must be some deaf person out there who would love to have a dog and who would make the perfect owner for Yippee. So, if there's any deaf people out there listening, please call me, Kitty Fitz, at 477-7777. Call him time. Day or night. If you're out of town, call correct. I gotta get rid of this dog. This is Pity Fitz speaking to you for the grand attorney you made society. Thank you. Now, I want to talk and I want you to listen. You understand me, Petey? Well, I think you. I said I talk and you listen. Now, Petey, I have tried to think what I've done to deserve a life I lead. Husband who spent four years in prison for robbing the filling station of $47. Then there's my psycho twins, Charlene and Stanley, who you know have caused me no end of grief. And my youngest, Jody, is never seen if he doesn't have a pack of your dogs following around him all the time. They follow him home, they follow him to school, they follow him everywhere. And that's sweet, Petey. I nearly had to whoop him because he wanted to take him to the First Baptist Church. Well, now, Bertha, I'm not... I said I'll talk and you listen. Now, Peter, I think we have a very serious situation on our hands. My son has something as bad as a drug habit. My son has a dog habit. He has a psychological addiction to dogs. And you, Petey Fisk, you're a puppy pusher. Well, I know. I said I'll talk and you listen. Now, I will put it with Chef Wolf, Big Six, Bingo, Blossom, Sweet, Nothing, Dolly, and Thunder. But if that little yippee, half rat, half chi wah wah, half whatever you've been talking about on the radio, if that little dog shows on my doorstep, Petey, they'll have to drag the river to find your body. <laughs> now, I said I talk, and you listen. Now, Petey, I'm going to call my Aunt Pearl Bruce. I swear to God I'm going to call my Aunt Pearl and I'm going to have her mix up a whole batch of her bitter pills. I'm serious. I'm as serious as a stroke. I will not be the mother of an addict, whether he's on opium or on basset hounds. Now say goodbye, Peter. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, 
we interrupt this program with a news update. The recent sighting of a UFO that is an unidentified flying object by R.R. Snailet has been discounted by his wife Dee. According to Dee Dee, R.R. was drunk when he actually claimed he was sighted. So she said everybody just forget about it. He was drunk. Well, we all thought it was something like that. We did. We did. We did. We did. We did. Well, that hell it had to be. And now, folks, sit back and listen to the number one show in Dewey County on the line with Lynch, where your business is everybody's business. And now, here's station manager, Leonard Children. <laughs> We've all had our troubles, troubles made us blue Been running round in circles, not knowing what to do We've all... Hi folks, uh, this is Lynn Chillers coming to your home through radio station in OKKK here in Tuna, Texas And before we go to our first caller, we're going to take a look at uh, this week in Tuna To find out just what's up Tuna's crawl this week Ron, let's go to work for OK, uh, Reverend Spikes says he sponsored another record burning at the Coweta Baptist Church. He says that's going to be held this Saturday at 7.30 at the Coweta Baptist Church, and he says to make sure to bring out all your rock and roll, and this time don't forget your old Chuck Berry and your old Brenda Lee and your little Richard. He says leave uh, Elvis and Buddy Holly at home. They're good southern boys. They'll be forgiven. <laughs> that'll be coming, uh, coming this Saturday night at the Coweta Baptist Church, so bring out all your rock and roll, and come on out and burn it. Right, uh, Bob Thompson says she sponsored another trip up to Eureka and Passion Springs play up in Arkansas. She says that bus is going to be leaving from the Methodist Church parking lot at uh, 7.45 a.m. And she says if you're not there by 7.45 a.m., well, she's going to leave you. Let's go to our first caller here. Hello, you're on the line with Leonard. Let it out. Oh, hang out. Leonard, Dee Dee Snavely. Dee Dee. Turn down your radio. Now you gotta remember when you call in here to turn down your radio because it just blows the hell out of my ears. Leonard, can't something be done about them Halloween pranksters? Now, now dude, it's kinda early to talk about uh, Halloween now, ain't it? Well, you wouldn't be saying that, Leonard, if you knew what I've been through. Now, soaping windows and letting the air out of tires is one thing, but I draw the line to extreme metal anguish. Do you hear me, Leonard? Oh, here you did. Now last year, those kids came over in the middle of the night and poured soul gum syrup all over my front porch. <laughs> Dude, that's real mean. <laughs> now Leonard, I'm just getting started. My mama comes over about 5.30 in the morning after she's had a prunes. And when my mama hit that big syrup, well, it just stopped her dead in her tracks. Dude, that's real mean. <laughs> it's not funny, Leonard. She was out there for two and a half hours. She watched the sun come up. <laughs> now, Diddy, who could you think of done something that mean? Well, I'm sure that Virgil Carp was in on it. Of course, I, I can't prove nothing. Yeah, it sounds like something Virgil would do. Well, if I catch him by my house, he better have a high threshold to pay. Now, Diddy, we know you wouldn't hurt that boy. Hide and watch, Leonard. Hide and watch. Now, now Virgil, son, I, I tell you, if you're out there and you're listening, this woman means business. But Leonard, the damage is already done. Why, why I can't even pull syrup over my pancakes without thinking about that poor old lady trying to reach that doorbell? <laughs> Diddy, why don't you go inside and calm down and take one of your nerve pills? I'll then leave, I will. All right, bye-bye, Diddy. <laughs> you know, folks, it's getting so the kids can't have any fun anymore. But, you know, Diddy does have a rough life down there running that weapon store. Well, she's got a lot to let out. So we'll go to our next call now. Hello, you're on the line with Leonard. Let it low. Oh, hang on. Turn it down. Turn your radio down. Come on. Uh, I'm sorry, I forgot to turn down my radio. Uh, this is Finest Clyde. Hey, what's up, Finest? I am going to announce I will be a candidate for Tour de City Council in next year's election. Now, Folgers, you've been running for city council now for as long as I can remember. Why don't you just give up? Well, you know, it's funny. <laughs> in past years, people have made personality a major issue. And let's face it, in a personality contest, I'm always going to lose. I mean, I'm short, and I was born in Indiana, and people just naturally seem to hate me. Well, you got a point there, Flipper. But this year, I'm injecting new and vital information that cannot be ignored by the voters. Like what, they go? Did you know, for example, that there's millions of people in this country who pay no taxes whatsoever? Like who, penis? 
Like welfare mothers and prisoners? They don't pay any? No. And be easy to tax the prisoners because everybody knows where they are. Well, you got a part there, Penis, and we wish you the best of luck this time around. Well, you only have to win what? <laughs> oh. Remember, folks, you heard it here first. <laughs> now, Penis Bly's been running for city council now for as long as I can remember. And you know, folks, he hasn't even got the first base. <laughs> we'll see what happens this time around. Let's go to war. Next call. Hello, you're on the line with Leonard. Leonard, oh. What are you? Uh, this is Stanley, if you Miller. Now, Stanley, what do you want? Keep it clean now. Hey, Leonard, I was just listening to your program, and it seems to me, if the government wants to put a tax on something, why don't they go on and put a tax on stupidity? Now, Stanley, this is a serious program. Get to it. I am serious. I'll tell you one thing. If this country had stupid tax, fine-ass Bly would be in the top bracket. Now, Stanley, fine-ass Bly is a model citizen, and like, uh, some people I know. He's an ignorant little idiot. Now, Stanley, we don't need to get into any name code. He's a pinhead, isn't he? Stanley. Hey, Leonard. Hey. Why don't you tell fine-ass Bly to kiss my referendum? Hey, can't say that in the radio. <laughs> you know, I hate to say anything bad. I don't hate you because it's hard. But, you know, I thought it was a four years in reform school would have done something. Stanley's some good, but, you know, he just came out of there. Mean and Mussolini. <laughs> Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, got time for one more call, so let's go to those lines. Hello, you're on the line with Leonard. Let it all. What is it? Leonard, it's, it's Dee Dee Snavely again. What is it this time, Dee Dee? Leonard, can't something be done about them hobos under the interstate bridge? Out there uh, under the uh, underpass? Well, it's gotten so you can't even dump your garbage there anymore. <laughs> and stink, well, you can smell them in Coweta County now. There is another soap in the world to keep everybody clean. Am I wrong, Lennon? I believe you're right, Diddy. And instead of helping me out of the store, well, my husband, R.R., uh -uh, he goes down and drinks with him. Now, Diddy, is that where your husband, R.R., uh -uh, spotted that flying, unidentified Mexican food? No, it isn't, Lennon. And it's real wide of you to bring that up. God. You've been listening to Leonard on the line. This is all that's true. we got to do this last year. Sheriff Gibbon says Dandy Calvador is out of the state penitentiary and he's heading home in a 1962 Blue and Palace. So everybody watch out for him. He'll run over you. He will. He will. He will. Hey, the man will kill you. Oh, and now for that weather report, we're going to go out to the Buckner Basin with uh, Harold Dean Latimer. Harold Dean, what's it going to be? Well, in the weather. It's going to rain! <laughs> Get out of those tomatoes! Get out of those tomatoes! I'm gonna call 
Sheriff Gibbons. Let me in. Mrs. Forrest, we have traced over 70 dog poisonings to your doorstep. Now, don't you think you've taken your eccentricity a bit too far? Oh, it left my poodle in my yard. Where is it? I bet it's an egg sucker. Where is it? We feel you have been somewhat overzealous in the protection of your chicken. Where's my strychnine? Where's my strychnine? Oh, please, God, don't tell me I'm out of my strychnine. In fact, Mrs. Burroughs, there are those of us here at the Humane Society that actually believe you enjoy poisoning dogs. Oh, I'll kill my Henry if he's in my strychnine. We are well aware of your bitter pill. Those strychnine laced biscuits rolled into enticing little dough balls. I found it. Henry thought he'd be smart and hide it, but I found it. I found it. You stay right there, you little poodle. I'm going to get my little dough balls. I'm going to make you a bitter pill. We are also aware that your husband, Henry, is the owner of Ripper, the finest fur dog in Dewey County. How could anyone who lives around a $2,000 dog like Ripper poison people's puppies so heartlessly? Yeah, poppy, 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 poppy. Come on and get it, egg lips. I got you a bitter pill. Now, I'm just going to say, Ripper, Ripper, you get away from that bitter pill now. Ripper, you stay back now. It's not for you. You be good. Now, I'm going to set the bitter pill. Right here. And you, you can come and get it. Come on and get it, Egglet. Come on. Ripper, Ripper, stay back. No, it's not for you, Ripper. Oh, my God. Ripper's eating the bitter pill. Mrs. Burris, you have classic symptoms of canicidal zombies. A disease which makes you want to kill other people's dogs for real. Or imagine the reason. Oh, I poisoned Henry's bird dog. Oh, look at him shake. Now, the only known cure for canicidal diabetes is to surround the patient with lots of dogs until the urge to kill passes. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, what am I going to do? Think, girl. Think, 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 think. think. Oh, I, I knew what I would do. I'll call Stanley. I can always count on Stanley. I'll, I'll have him come down here and, and, and drag the dog out in the road and, well, Run him over with the pony act. I'll tell Henry he got hit by a car. And are you in luck, Mrs. Burr? Because the Humane Society has a one-way ticket to the Texas State Dog Fair, where you can be surrounded by over 4,000 dogs. That's what I'll do. I'll call Stanley. I can always count on Stanley. Do it, you make it through the entire weekend without poisoning a single dog. The Humane Society will pay your bus fare home. <laughs> Think, you can find peace of mind, and the dogs of your neighborhood can have a respite <laughs> from the death and the carnage to which they have been subjected. Sincerely, pity first. Greater to the humane to stop. Hello, Stanley. Stanley, this is Pearl. Yeah, I, I want you to come over here and run over Henry's bird dog. <laughs> A ripper, uh-huh. Wait, well, no, he, he's already dead. I killed him. Oh, I know, Stan. It's not a much fun running over a dead dog. <laughs> Please, the guy, get over here. I don't believe I can stand it. Oh, all right. You're a good man. Uh-huh, bye-bye. I can always count on Stan. And while he's down here, I'll, I'll have him drive me down to the funeral parlor so I can view Judge Buckner. I tell you, Lord, nothing will get me out of this heat more than to see him dead. I just want to see for myself. Make for sure. Pearl! Stan, is that you? Pearl! Stan, come in. Come in, Stan. Pearl. How come you went on ran over Henry's bird dog? I didn't. Don't say that. It was an accident. I was just uh, going after one of them uh, egg sucking poodles, and Ripper came up and snatched my bitter pill. Oh. Well, hell, Pearl, I was kind of locked, old Ripper. Well, I didn't. When Henry that. finds out you went on poison a $2,000 dog, well, well he's going to have a conniption fit. Oh, Stanley, he'll scream like a banshee. Now, drag that dog in the room. Come on, drag him out of the room. We'll run him over the car. Hey, Pearl, 
You crazy. Oh, don't say that. I am not. Now, quick, drag that dog out the road now. Oh, and stand it. I want you to take me down to the funeral parlor so I can view Judge Button. You can wait for me in the tasty freeze out. I'll buy you an ice cream cone. All right. All right. <laughs> Come on, Carl, get in the car. I I'm coming. Well, hey, now, hurry up, or I want to go up and see this. I'm coming, don't rush me. I'm an old woman. Mm. All right, Miss Stanley. You make this look good. All right, Stanley. Pump it! guide that slides up and over the mm -hmm. red button. Just have to be careful when you go to push it. Okay. Stir it up. Okay, it's on. It's on? Do it to it. so you look good. Uh, 
Now Pearl Judge Gardner has met his maker at last. In a day 11 swimsuit. <laughs> oh, Judge, I don't believe I can stand it. Oh, the fuck's man out of the garden. I ain't praying to the moon, praying to the light. I said I'd not give you a mile to go before I reach the town hall. And town hall, town hall. We've all had our troubles, troubles made us blue. Been running round in circles, not knowing what to do. We've all had to worry, worry made us sad. But soon we'll have no worry, then soon we'll all be glad. When our old expensive check comes to our door, we won't have to skip and worry anymore. Every dog can have a ball, every kid. Guess who? <laughs> yep. Well, don't you just look like yourself. Don't you, though, Your Honor, Dad? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine how safe I feel? Of course, uh, I had a lot of time to think about that. Well, I was in reform school. Yeah, that is about all I can say for Gatesville. Plenty of time to think. Yeah, Judge, I'd have nuzzled up to that homely housekeeper of yours, Yolanda. Well, she thought I was in love. I kept it up, though, until I got me a copy of all her keys. And I got all my information bit by bit. Like her schedule, and your schedule, and that one hour, yeah, that one hour when you was all alone and she was out buying groceries. I found out about that. Then I'll set you up. I just parked across from the Piggly Wiggly and waited. And then I seen you land to go in there. I done a beeline over to your house. Drove up the curving driveway. Walked right through the damn front door. Up the flight of stairs. Right into your bedroom. And all you could do was sit there on your half-paralyzed ass and stare. But you knew what I was there for. You knew. Oh, man. It was hell getting you into that swimsuit. But it was worth it. You want to know what my favorite part was, huh? You want to know what my favorite part was, Your Honor? It was when I pulled out that syringe. And you started fleeing with me. You plead with me. And then all it took to finish you off was a few little air bubbles right in the vein. Stroke. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're even. Then why would not I feel like it, huh? You know, sometime after my mom was dead, I might just go on and turn myself in. Yeah, I can hear everybody now. Well, who would have thought standing if you met a house to raise the food at all? says he's organized another meeting of the Smut Snatchers of the New Order. He says that meeting will be held tonight at 7.30 at the Cowhide Baptist Church. And he says uh, the radio station OKK is going to carry that meeting live, so you folks tune in. Uh, we'll see, the Smut Snatchers' latest project is cleaning up the dictionaries down at the Tuna High School Library. Now, if you have a word that you feel should not be in the dictionary, or, or you don't want your pets around that word, or you know, etc. Just bring it on down to the meeting tonight. Just bring it on down. And Reverend Spike says he'll judge each word on word by word basis. So that'll be 7.30 tonight at Cowboy Baptist Church. Oh, we have a very special guest that was here today at the radio station OKKK. She is the daughter of uh, Hank and Bertha Buehmiller. 
and she is a senior at Tuna High School, and she is Charlene Newmiller. Charlene is the winner of this year's uh, annual, uh, annual that is, Javelina Club Poetry Writing Contest, and if she wins next month in Wichita Falls, she's going to go all the way out to the national competition held in Butte in Montana come February. Yeah. Why in the hell they have it there? I just don't know. But anyway, Charlene says her poem registers her love and admiration for Tuna, and her poem speaks for itself, so you take it away, Sugar. <clears throat> my Tuna by Charlene Newmiller. Tuna, oh my Tuna, the only place I know. I've often thought of leaving you, but don't know where I'd go. For Paris has no barbecue, and Rome just can't compare to a lovely Texas sunset when the dust is in the air. <laughs> tuna, oh my tuna, is such fun on Friday night when the Jaguars lose another game and everybody fights. <laughs> and I love you when you're frozen, and I love you when you're dry, and in April when the pollen is so thick it makes you cry. But tuna, oh my tuna, please stay just the way you are. Cause I just think the world outside of Tuna is bizarre. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, Charlotte. Isn't that just a warm cockles of your heart? <laughs> Thank you, Charlene. That was real nice. Got a call today from Nadine Wooten's mother, Norm. She says Nadine's standing along the highway again with her suitcase. <laughs> now, as most of you folks know around this time of the year, old Nadine stands along Route 4 with her suitcase. So we just thought to remind her, whatever you do, don't pick her up. Because she'll only tell you she's waiting on Mr. Montague. So we just thought to remind her, whatever you do, don't run her over him. Don't pick her up. <laughs> Looks like uh, that time of the year again, don't it? It is. It is. It is. Well, next up in the news, Juan L. Rainey is not dead. No, she's not. She's not. She's not. Now, as you all know, Juan L. had him been in the hospital for about eight months with a combination of fatal diseases. I don't know how many did she had. Well, I don't remember, but it was just awful. It was awful. I thought she was going to die. She thought she was going to die. Well, we all thought she was going to die. We did. We did, we did, but she didn't. No, she didn't. And she says, everybody stop by and see her, give her a ring. She's not dead. She's okay. She is, she is, she is. <laughs> well, folks, it's time for a little culture. And keeping with the government's new program allowing private radio stations here to contribute to America's artistic needs, radio station OKKK is proud to present this week's Art Minute. And this week's guest is none other than Tuna's own R.R. Snavely. So, what do you got for us today, R.R.? Well, well, I got Honky Tonk Angels. Honky Tonk Angels, well, take it away, R.R. Well, I got to warm up first, Arnold. Well, hurry up, R.R. You only got about 40 seconds left. went over by about 20 seconds. Now, as you all know, Maxie does the famous Scarlett O'Hara, I'll never eat a root again scene, and just as she brought the root to her lips, the buzzer went off. Now, they say Maxie threw a wall-eyed fit, but I spoke to her chaperone, Mildred Jean Perkins, and she says that Maxie will be there for the swimsuit competition tomorrow night. Well, that gal is a trooper. She is. She is, she is, she is. And from our national news desk, Nuclear accident imperils millions in seven states. 
Texas not included. Well, that's all the news we got for you, but you know, don't touch that now. Don't touch that now. Hey, get away from it. Get away from it, cuz Tuna Speak C is next. You know, we receive a whole lot of flack here, saying that we are insensitive to the needs of fish. Well, this is not true. We care a great deal about fish. We understand that when you take a fish out of the water with a hook in its mouth, rip it out through its jaw, stick a knife in its anal opening, and cut it up to its mouth, the fish feels that. Fish <laughs> feel pain. They are just very, very subtle about expressing it. <laughs> Please join the growing number of Americans who prefer their fish in rivers and streams and not on a plate with tater tots. This is Petey Fish speaking to you for the Great Tuna Humane Society. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's get this meeting now. Now. As a citizen of Tuna, I feel it's my obligation to speak up about this uh, Agent Orange stuff. It's been uh, having effects on our servicemen. Now, over the past 14 years I've been in my business, the hard hat business, I've hired 14 veterans, Vietnam veterans, mind you. And out of those 14, only four of them has died, but none of them turned orange. I swear to God, not one of them turned anywhere near orange. I, I just think it was one of those uh, propaganda deals cooked up by the liberal-oriented presses and the, the hippie people. So I just want to, to squelch all the rumors about the Asian orange stuff in our servicemen. So this is Emma Watkins on station OKKK. Thank you. Please send me a boy for my luggage. 
And the last one is, no he pedido esto, which means, well, I didn't know to this. Now, that is all the Spanish, and in red blood Americans all the people getting nerve. Let's just see if the newspapers make fun of that. Well, he's not here, so I'm going to fall your head. We need to send out a snatch squad. Well, we do. We need to send out a book snatcher squad to the Tuna High School Library to check those dictionaries. Now, we have a new list of words that could have possibly offensive to pre-college students. Now, the words are hot hook of coat, clap, deep flower, balls, knocker, and nuts. And after much prayer and soul searching with the Lord, the committee has decided not to change our letterhead this time. We just simply can't afford it. Well, well here he is. Ladies and gentlemen, I hereby turn this meeting over to our honorable president, the Reverend Spider. Thank you, Baron. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so sorry I'm so late. But let's get down to business. First off, we need to send out a snatch squad to oh, the Tuna oh, High School oh, Library. Vera, that's all the fun of being a uh, president, sending out a snatch artist. I'm sorry, I, I won't do it again. Please don't. <laughs> Secondly, we need to send out a communique on our bilingual education Oh, I've already told him that too. Well, no, Vera, you just told them everything now, didn't you? Well, what did you expect me to do 15 minutes while you weren't here? Sing show tunes? <laughs> Now, Vera, we don't need to get into this uh, power struggle thing here in front of all these nice people. Hello, how, how are you? Hush, hush, now the radio people are here. Oh, so they are. Hello, Arnolds. How are you? Ah, fine, but. Ah, what, what? Are we ready with the uh, Buckner eulogy? Of course. We're ready with the Buckner eulogy, so just set the radio stuff back there, and, and when you're ready for me, just kind of wave like so. Good. No, no, I'm ready. Uh, are, are, we, are we live? This is the Reverend Spikes, and I just want to say, I just want to say a few words about a friend of mine and a friend of Tunis. Roscoe Buckner was a man who spent his whole life in service to his community, his country, and his lord. And we're sure that when the roll is called up yonder, he'll be there. He was a judge who made hay while the sun shined, and always, I say always, was a smile be his umbrella. He was a man who always kept his sunny side up and always saw the silver lining behind every cloud. He was a judge who took no wooden nickels nor threw no caution to the wind, but what looked before he leapt in and never got in over his head. No, he kept his head when all around him people were losing theirs and blaming it on him. About this man, we can truly say he was one of a kind, a jolly good fellow, which nobody, nobody can deny. He was one for all and all for one to his own self truth. And I can tell you this, he did it his way. He was a fine upstanding man who would uh, let bygones be bygones and, and uh, uh, always, always remember the Alamo. About this man, we can truly say he was the creme in Tunis coffee. He would uh, fire with fire and, and kept the home fires burning. And when it got too hot, he got out of that kitchen. And he'd walk the extra mile, he'd walk it, and he'd walk, walk it softly and he'd carry a big stick. He was a, a pepper, a man's man, early to bed, early to rise. He would lay his cards down on the table and uh, gather at the river and bring in the sheaves. Hunger was his best pickle. Oh, what the devil is that mean? Husker. He was a man who wouldn't fire until he saw the whites of their eyes, but whistled a happy tune, praised God, and, and passed that ammunition. For he had not just begun to fight, for never, ever, ever did I ever hear the man say die. He just did. <laughs> uh, he was a fine, upstanding civil servant who had practiced what he preached, uh, put his best foot forward and his money where his mouth was. And when the going got tough, he was gone. <laughs> it's not easy to find the words to describe such a man, but I've done my best. And I commend his soul to you, Lord. I, the Reverend Spikes, commend him. Amen, Lord. Amen. What's that, Arles? Oh, no. Just, just a second. <clears throat> this is the Reverend Spy, so I just want to say, I just want to say a few words about a friend of mine and a friend of Tunis. <laughs> Thank you.
They see Thurston Wiggles with the Sparks Flash. This just in, the Tuna High School Jaguars lost their season opener against the Coldberg Coleman and Cheese. It was a hard-fought contest, but in the end, the purple and green cats were on the short end of a 48-0 score. Coach Raymond Chassaway evaluated the loss this away. Well, yeah, we lost uh, mainly because we couldn't score, but uh, like standing back, they made seven touchdowns was a major factor in the loss also. You know, I don't know which was a bigger factor, but to take away them two things, it would have been a sack. So uh, I'm real proud of our boys anyway. They have saw the through with the crime report. Now, according to statistics, crime is down in the Great Tuna area from this time last year. Now, this time last year, there were six reps, and this year so far, we only had four. Sheriff Gibbon said, though the numbers may still seem high, there's no reason for alarm over Tuna's high crime rate. Says most of the same people getting arrested over and over and over again. Here we have Sheriff Gibbons himself in an interview taped earlier this morning. Yeah, well, I don't run no uh, country club, that's for sure. <laughs> Where I'm going to come from, the jail seems to be a, you know, unpleasant experience, and I think it still should be. I really do. And I'll tell you one thing, you can call me old-fashioned, but a couple of hundred years ago, law enforcement was a much more rewarding profession than it is today. The sheriff's marks were recorded early this morning at the Dewey County Jail. Well, boy, seems like a... Some people just can't keep out of trouble, now can they, huh? Can they? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you don't put me on, you stand. Would you? How would you put me on, boy? Would you, huh? Stand it, would you, huh? Boy, I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, Stanley, I got proof. I got evidence. I got everything I need to know about you, boy. You know how much the state is spent on you to rehabilitate you. You're what we call a habitual. Hey, hey, hey. Are you going to charge me with anything? Yeah, I'm going to charge you, rash boy. But first, I'm going to talk to you about this. Stanley, what are you doing in the high dirt knee in your car? You doing drugs, boy? Hey, 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 you, you come on over here. Come on, come on over here, take a look at my arms. Yeah, look as close as you want. Put a magnifying glass up to them, because there ain't no needles in my arms. And what are you doing with a hypo needle in your car? Uh, my mama's got diabetes, and I'll keep it in there in case she has a fit. Uh, but there ain't nothing that needle but air, Sheriff. Nothing but air. So, anything wrong with that, huh, Sheriff? Anything wrong with having a needle flare? Is that against the law, huh? You think you're real smart, don't you, boy? But I don't think you're too smart, no. You're kind of real. No, not too smart. I don't think so. Not at all. No, sir, boy! Hey, are you going to charge me with anything? Yeah! I'm going to charge your ass, boy! You may think we're a couple of Country bumpkins out here running the jail. We've been keeping an eye on you. Hey, you gonna charge me? You do it. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Right now. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, Stanley. Traffic tickets, two of them. One for speeding 40 in a 20 zone and one for no turn signal. So I suggest next time you take old, you land out for joyriding, you think again. Now you're going to stay there until I get my $41.27. Now, how smart do you think you are now, Baby Miller? <laughs> Damn fool. Oh, and to Stanley, if the phone rings, uh, don't you bother.
Oh, Lord, I know now I've done some things in my life that I, well, just shouldn't have done. And you've forgiven me time and time again. But please, Lord, just this once, please don't let Henry to find out about that bird dog. <laughs> Amen. Phone. Come on, I know you've got to be home now. I'm all out of strychnine, and I, I know you've got some. Come on, Stanley. <laughs> well, I, I guess it'll have to wait till morning, but I just don't sleep well. Now I'm not knowing there's no strychnine in the house. <laughs> Uh, land of children with uh, two of the bulls born. Now, if you have any young ones between the ages of uh, 8 and 14, we know that uh, Thursday is your last day to register your kids for Colonel Spratberry's Character Camp and Survival Institute. Now, the kids there are offering classes in Old Testament appreciation, uh, segregation of uh, scriptures, Christian biology, and character development, and the proper use of uh, firearms. So, register your kids today and do them some good. Good, honey. Turn that thing off, now. Listen, that thing too much. So, turn it off. Come on. Down there, like. All right, now, son. I want you to tell Mama I've gone on to check on the hired hands to make sure they aren't out getting drunk when they should be sleeping on the job. So, uh, you tell your mama. Why don't you tell Mama? Because I told you to now. And turn that damn thing off now. Uh, he's gone, Mom. Gone where? Uh, he said he went out uh, to check on the hired hands to make sure they weren't out getting drunk. Well, now, you come on up to bed now, children, okay? Well, Mama, can I stay up just a little while and listen to the radio? No, now, you heard me. And don't come down in the middle of the night sleeping on the couch and leaving the radio on all night, all right? All right, Mother. All right, go on up to bed. All right. You're going to get into a lot of hot water. Jody, honey, the puppy is whining. I'm taking care of it, Mama. Jody, honey, put the puppy out now. All right, Mama. I'm going up to bed and say a prayer. I will, Mama. I'm listening. Dear God, thank you for the puppy, and thank you for summer vacation, and God bless Mama. Amen. Jody, honey, leave the puppy out. All right, Mama. Going off to check on the hired hands, huh? Make sure they're all getting, getting drunk. Well, that's a new one. I haven't heard that one before. I wonder how long it took him to think of that one. Oh, Lord, I need help. Now, as you know, Lord, Last week, I, I bought a gun. Well, you just have to give me courage enough not to buy any bullets. <laughs> I'm in. All day I face a barren waste without the taste of water. Hold oh, and die with throats burn dry and songs that run for water. Come on, y'all, yeah! Two bits, four bits. <laughs> Charlie, now, how do you say that you didn't make chili to stop that practicing? All right, Mother. Now go on up to bed and say your prayers now. 
Baby, I figure I have had seven years, three in junior high and four in high school to get cheerleader. I have preached to you till my knees are flat and nothing. Without giving notice, I'm becoming an official agnostic. Throw that on. Amen. <laughs> Chalupa, you and Morgan David. But Daddy, I, I wasn't drinking when when the taco was flying. Oh, shut up! <laughs> now I swear to God, if I wasn't such a hard shell Baptist, and if Mama was dead, well, I'd divorce your butt. <laughs> Good evening, Kevin. This is Thurston Lee. And this is all the through. And this is the week through. Bedtime report. And now for the news. Take it away, Arnie. Well, actually, we had a lot of news, but we lost it. We did. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, we lost it. Well, we had a lot of news, but we lost it. We did. We did. We did. Right. Wait, did you look under the table? I've looked everywhere, and I, I can't find it, but we'll be back in a minute, and we'll find it, and we'll have it for you. Wait, wait, did you look under the car? Well, I, I went under the car, and I found it. Well, where the hell did I put that thing? Let's get this meeting started now. Let's get it started the right way with the prep. <laughs> uh, Lord, now, as you know, we down here trying to make this world a, a better kind of place uh, for the, uh, the right kind of people. I'm in. Yes, 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 and the ducks are just starting to arrive. Now you stop that. How could I put you out of your misery if you're wagging your tail? Come on. All right, all right, you can stay. Go on, Go out in the backyard and play. Hey, hey, don't bark at rules. Snakes are very sensitive. I don't know if there's anybody out there, I, I never have understood very much about religion, but if you are, I'd like to ask for a few things for the animals. Now, I'm doing the best I can, but I've got two dozen dogs, and I don't even have a count on the cats, and of course there's the ducks, and Ruth, and Yippie. And the other thing is that hunting season is just around the corner, and that means the nightmares are going to start. And once I hear the first shot, the nightmares start. And they don't really stop till November. I hate to bother you with it. I really do. But if you are out there and you did create all this, then, well, we sure could use some help. Thank you. Amen. I don't know. Wait, wait, go for it. 
around me. Now, did your grandma come in here again and take the news with her? I don't know. Well, you know how she likes to take it and bring yeah. it to the resting home. Yeah, I know. Well, I know. well, did the cat get it again? Maybe. Well, did, I'll take it in the litter box. All right, go ahead. <laughs> well, did, did, did you look in the liquor cabinet? Yeah, of course I looked in the liquor cabinet. Come on, again, did you bring me anything, baby? Well, I didn't find no news, that's well, for sure. Well, we need some news now. I know. Well, I'd look in the wastebasket, but... Yeah, you know, I would too. Uh, hell, the um, icebox? How about the icebox? Yeah, we can look in the icebox. I'll go ahead and do that. Well, I'd look out back, but... Just... I'll check the garbage, but I don't know. Oh, God. Well, hey, I'll some... tell you what, folks. We lost the news. We have. We have, we have. I'll give up, coach. Take me out. I can't find the news. <laughs> well, we're going to say goodnight to you. Good night. And we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. And until then, remember our motto here at Radio Station OKKK. If you can find someplace you like better than tuna, move. Thank you.